Russians penetrate into the rear of the Ukrainian armed forces through underground tunnels. Russian troops are digging underground tunnels to penetrate behind the front lines in Ukraine and attack Ukrainian positions, Newsweek reports, citing a statement from the Russian Defense Ministry. According to a Russian department report on Telegram, Russian assault units in the Donetsk Oblast captured a major stronghold of the Ukrainian armed forces on the eastern outskirts of the village of Pivnichno using an underground tunnel. The detachment's servicemen secretly cleared and used a tunnel more than three kilometers long along the Seversky Donetsk Canal and reached the rear of the well-fortified stronghold with permanent firing points and underground shelters, the defense ministry said in a statement. After this, the Russians established a supply of ammunition, weapons and food for the assault troops through the tunnel. As noted by the Russian Defense Ministry, Russian troops using the element of surprise completely captured the stronghold, forcing the enemy to surrender or leave their positions and retreat. This tactic of the occupiers is not new. Ukrainian forces reported on the use of dug tunnels by the Russians back in the fall of last year during the battle for Avdiivka. They dig them in close proximity to our positions. Firstly, this helps with camouflage. Secondly, they can suddenly appear near our positions, the Ukrainian armed forces stated at the time. As for the Russians' tactics, our war is often compared to World War I. On the Avdiivka front, the Russians have started using the tactic of digging tunnels. Anton Gotsukon, spokesperson for the Marko Bezruchko 110th Separate Mechanized Brigade, said on national television in October 2023, they're digging them close to our positions. First, this aids with concealment. Secondly, they can then unexpectedly emerge close to our positions, said Kotsukon. Our defense officers have also spotted the Russians using robotic vehicles that serve as remote-controlled vehicles. They're used to deliver ammunition. These are some sort of special vehicles. They're quite big and they can carry a decent load, the spokesperson added. Hurricane Barrel strengthened to Category 5 status after it ripped doors, windows and roofs off homes across the Barbados southeastern Caribbean with devastating winds and storm surge fueled by the Atlantic's record warmth. This hurricane brought devastation to the Windward Islands, where at least one person is dead. Its intensity also marks just the second time an Atlantic hurricane has reached Category 5 status in July after Emily did so on July 17, 2005, according to the National Hurricane Center. Fluctuations in strength are likely during the next day or so, but Beryl is expected to still be near major hurricane intensity as it moves into the Central Caribbean and passes near Jamaica, the National Hurricane Center said. Beryl made landfall on the island of Cariaco in Grenada as the earliest category for storm in the Atlantic, then the National Hurricane Center in Miami said its winds had increased to Category 5 strength. Fluctuations in strength, and later a significant weakening, were forecast as the storm pushes further into the Caribbean in the coming days. In Grenada, about 95% of the island has lost power due to Hurricane Beryl, Nila Etienne, press secretary for the office of the Prime Minister, told CNN. Telecommunications across Grenada are down, and some individuals have lost internet service, Etienne explained. All schools and business are closed, including the airport, the secretary said, adding only hospitals and the National Police Force are currently operational. The airport reported a sustained wind speed of 92 miles per hour and a gust of 121 miles per hour, according to the National Hurricane Center. Barrel's arrival marks an exceptionally early start to the Atlantic hurricane season.